What's going on guys? Welcome to the first episode of what we're gonna call The Roll Road. Now, I'm gonna be your main host here, Windu the Mace, of course. We got our other co-host, A Kick in the Head, followed by our guest host, Volduin. And he's going to be our beginner for the day in this series as we do our best to quite frankly just show you guys tips and tricks about how to improve as a beginner moving on forward and hopefully you guys can learn as much as bouldering is about to here and let's get it going now kick what's our first subject man so the first topic we had today is talking about our last hitting so volden on average how many minions do you think you're getting per wave whenever you're during your laning phase probably around four probably around four that's a good number to start with. We're gonna take a look at that number and run it over a scale of uh, five minutes and see the difference of getting those four last hits on the minions versus getting um, five or six minions in that wave. And the priority of how getting that over the long run makes a big difference. Gotcha, so, so here's one of the things, like a lot of people, they they don't realize, quite frankly, and Bull, I know that, you know, since you hang out in my stream, you've, pro you've heard this a little bit before, but, a lot of people don't realize how much, let's say, one minion can actually make over the course of time. Like, I'll give you this example. So you said four minions is about the average that you do. Now, the minions themselves, you know, they vary on gold. They can go anywhere between, you know, like like the sm smaller amount for melees, you know, range might cost a little more, siege might cost a little bit more than that. Well, let's just say on average for this example, let's just say that 25, gold is average per minion right and then moving forward from there so if you get four minions per wave that means that you're getting about an average of 100 gold an average of 100 gold per wave now the thing is let's say minion wave spawns every minute at that point when you get up to the five minute mark you've collected a total of extra 500 gold in the first five minutes, which you can think to yourself, that's not bad. That's like another A pistol, or that's like another spring, maybe beginner boots and then work towards something else. You get where I'm coming from? But too many people don't realize how much an extra minion or two can make the difference. Now, let's say you're not perfect. Let's say you miss a few last hits here and there. So let's say going from four minions to five minions. Now that's automatically gonna put you in an average of 125 gold per wave. Now once we grab those 125 times that by the five minutes, that's already gonna put you at 625. Now, the reason why this makes a difference is because as time progresses, the gold that you earn and the gold that you accumulate helps you get ahead, helps you hit power spikes faster and helps make a difference. Now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, so at five minutes, 125 gold, that's not too much of a difference. And you know, arguably, you're not wrong, but let's go ahead and just times that by two. So the 500, let's say at 10 minutes, you're looking at a thousand gold at that rate. The 625, you're already looking at 1300. Now the difference there is that 10 minutes, Player number two that was getting that one extra minion was able to get a free boots item, basically, and then some. While the first player that was only hitting four minions actually had to back, and from there, he's like, oh shit, you know what? I'm still missing 100 gold. Fuck, I don't got enough for the boots. Now, obviously, you're going to have gold drip and stuff like that adding onto it in its own, but it's just to show you that sometimes the difference of one minion per wave can honestly be the difference in scaling factor with you coming back with a nasty power spike to fuck people up or you coming back and be like, damn, bro, I, I should have waited another minute. I should have sort of gotten an extra minion. But quite frankly, you could have had that gold and that farm, that experience a lot sooner if you would have just prioritize the last hits themselves. Now, here's here's the thing that I want you to, I wanted to ask personally too, as to Bull. Now, I know it might seem like a trick question, but how important, well, I'm being honest, like how important do you think last hitting is for an ADC in general? Like if you had to rate it, let's say one out of 10. Personally, from where I am, I would say like a six, honestly. And that's just from what I've seen. But I would say okay. it's more important than any other position. 
in okay. terms of scaling. I respect that. Because, you know, like, you're probably taking into consideration, like, you know, having to get kills and stuff like that. So you, you just... Not, like, yeah, I figure kills are still worth more than a last hit. Obviously, it's worth a little bit more gold, especially if they're... Streak or kill streak, I mean. Yeah, and, and I get that. And there's going to be scenarios where it will make a difference. You know, a kill, it might be worth, like you said, if they are on a kill streak, it might be worth solidifying that kill and missing out on a few mm -hmm. farm. That makes perfect sense. But what I'm finding, and Kick will probably attest to this, is the fact that too many players have that mindset of a kill is worth more, and too many players don't get enough kills to support that mindset. Now, I'm not saying well, you that it's uh, off if you can't confirm it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like think about it. Like you, you it's, means of yeah. Gold. Like imagine the first. Imagine the first seven minutes. You're just focused on getting kills. You've gotten maybe a total of 10 minions, but in those first seven minutes, you only got one kill. So now the enemy laner that has zero kills, but already at like 40 minions, 40 million CS, 50 maybe, if he's really, really good. By that point, he's not only going to be a higher level, he's not only going to be have more gold, but you're probably going to get fucked up. And then the fact that you have to spend so much effort. Now you have to hit every single minion or land every single kill possible just to be able to catch up. Because while you were hunting the entire time, the person against you was just last hitting a minion, last hitting a minion, last hitting a minion. You follow? Yeah, that's right. So it's it's one of those things that yeah, it, it I get what you're saying. I but I would still personally like i would try to make it so at use your mindset as an adc is don't consider your last hits as a six consider them as a 10 because of the value that per they provide but consider it as a 10 with intermittent pauses like if there's a moment where you can be like hey you know what i'm stopping my cs this is a kill for sure i know it go for it if you're confident in your abilities, you're confident in your team, go for it. That kill might pay off. But there shouldn't, it shouldn't come at the expense that you're always looking for a kill at the sacrifice of minions. Your priority should always be get last hits, kill the minions, and if something pops up, then I'll capitalize. You follow? You have anything you want to add, Kick? No, that's uh, that's the biggest thing to think about, I think, uh, when it comes to it, because while he was talking about hunting for a kill and getting that one kill, I mean, that's under the assumption that you get that kill. If you get in the habit of looking for for that first blood or something of the nature and you don't get it and then go back to lane, the gap is huge at that point. So you're, you're taking a very high risk for a minimal reward at that point, and especially during that laning phase of the game. Oh. Yeah, basically, yeah. The minions are going to always be there. The kill won't always be there. Right, I mean, quite frankly, the minions might get a kill before you do early game. I'm just going <laughs> to throw that shit <laughs> out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, what's the next thing we're going to talk about there? Kick. Moving on next, we're going to talk about the positioning of you as an ADC during your, uh, your laning phase. Gotcha. So, how would you rate your positioning, Bull? Um... Uh, Five. Wow. Very average. I, saw, I saw you looking up to that corner, bro. I saw you like I'm, looking I'm off trying, into the corner man, of the I'm room. He's like, Ugh. I'm, ha I'm having He's a like, brain blast right now. I'm trying to figure out what I uh, what I rate myself. <laughs> I mean, I get what that. justifies your ranking. Like, so what do you think is good positioning to have? Uh, like, what types of criteria do you think that are important to meet to maintain good positioning as an ADC? As an ADC, don't frontline, don't barrel stuff uh, an enemy. Um, that's one thing. I do it a couple times in the video you're going to see. <laughs> but I yeah, definitely, that's something that I need right to get out of that, <laughs> that mindset. Um, but yeah, uh, don't barrel stuff. Uh, be behind and get peel from your tanks um, and mages. So try to be kind of either in the middle or behind them, just so you're in an, a, a position where you don't get caught out. Um, and now, uh, honestly, if you can stay at the maximum amount of distance, that's probably preferred. I mean, your gun shoots for a reason. <laughs> you don't have to make now, him. Let me let me ask you this, because I find it interesting that you say that. And I know, at least on, on my stream, we've talked about stuff like this before. So you saying that, how easy is that for you to actually implement? 
I would say my positioning amongst my team, uh, especially when they're on comms, it would be a lot easier for me to do. Uh, when I'm solo queuing and other positions, maybe when I'm not necessarily on comms with everyone, it's a little bit harder. Uh, and I get a little bit probably more kill hungry. And that immediately causes me to either push up, get out of position. So it's more so one of those like chase scenarios that don't pay off for me, but I get caught out because of it. So why do you think there's a difference between the, the solo queue aspect and being grouped up with, with homies? Like... What, what makes you so, so part of it like, is, is it like the feel I, I, I know the element so the element of just being in comms allows you to have a little bit more ability to steamroll i personally think you're a little bit more on the same page as to be like let's group up here and you'll probably be a little bit more closely packed if you're not on comms more than likely you're not going to have all five people with you until the end game so you're only going to have maybe three or four people especially in like an early raptors for instance you might only have four people there I got gotcha. you. Okay. So I don't know. That's how do, how do you feel about what he just said there, Kick? Let me hear your feedback on that. Uh, regarding the five stacking versus the solo queue. Um. Well, not that. Not that. Well, like we'll talk. We'll talk a little bit about that more on a later date. But um, more of the mindset change in general between comms versus no comms. Mm, comms versus no comms that's something that as long as you've identified the problem um you know that there is a difference as long as you uh as a carry take that into consideration in your matches i think that it's not as big of a deal as you might lead it to be so let's say for instance you want to take an engagement on your side of the map but whenever you ping group up attack right lane you see that your off laner is not coming you should take that into consideration as yourself and making the decision, should I actually take this fight? Should I actually go for this Raptor? Because I don't see their off laner and I see mine still in lane. So that might be an indication that the plays that you want to make while you could make while you're on comms might not be the plays that you should make while you're in solo queue. If your support is pinging retreat, but you know for a fact that if both of you guys all in, you could get that kill but your support's pinging retreat and they don't feel confident in it, you might need to do what your support wants to do in that situation. Because yeah. if you go in, you're not even positive if they're going to follow you whenever you go up and past the, the line to fight. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Super true. Now, I actually wanted to show you guys this clip now. Uh, you guys should be able to see the clip that's playing right now. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of audio on it. I just want you to notice one thing that too many too many people in general roles, but I feel like especially ADC, since I get so kill hungry, like you were saying, especially if you're on comms with, with your buddies, you're relying on the fact that they're going to talk to you. You're relying on the fact that it's more of a death ball meta, so to speak. Right. Is that fair to say? So then not too many people realize the fact that that mini map Glancing at that minimap once every couple seconds makes the fucking difference. Like glancing at that minimap saves you at times. Like you, you see here how I'm literally battling with their Bellica, which was actually the support here. And there was a there was a team fight going on on mid. That's why I was like, okay, I'm confident being pushed up. I'm confident of just fighting this one v one, whatever, because I still need to get my farm and whatnot. I was like, oh, maybe I'll get a kill. And then for a split second, I realized. There is only one person on the map. There's only one. I don't see nobody. And I was in the middle of a fight. Like, you got to realize, the moment that my ability was charging up, as it's charging up, I glance real quick. So I made the conscientious decision at that, at that point. Should I stay or should I leave? And that's why you see me cast the ability immediately 180. And you hear me just say it out loud. I can already see they're coming in on me. They're missing. And then immediately, bam, there goes Murdoch showing up to the lane. So it's almost like the sixth sense. Like you'll, you'll develop game sense as the game goes on, right? And especially if you're an old Paragon player, you'll have more game sense than the average player that might just be starting new, right? But it's, it's very easy to get flustered, even if it, as an experienced player, when you're trying to learn all these systems between items, still trying to get the kill, learning the kits for the characters, etc. that you might honestly forget something as simple as, yo, there's nobody in this fucking map right now. Where the fuck are they? 
You feel me? Now, what do you have to say about the mini map specifically? I want I want I want to hear what Volduin like. How do you feel about the mini map? Like, do you think the mini map is honestly like super essential? Do you not use it a lot? What are your thoughts on the mini map in itself? I actually I actually try to use it a fair amount. Um, so it's, it's a little different for jungle because especially if you see him in lane, that's a really good indication. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of times you don't see him, so that's a little difficult. Um, but I use it uh, when, especially whenever there's wards on the map. But I guess not so much anymore because of that recent update where they, the pings implemented. I actually just use the audio ping. And I immediately okay. look when I hear it. It's almost like a dog with a treat. Now I know I'm <laughs> gonna yeah. look like quick. Yeah, so it definitely helps a little bit, but um, that definitely didn't used to exist in Old Paragon, but I like that. Um, but no, I need to definitely like to... use the mini map more often because uh, I don't look at it enough to, you know, actually get a sense of security while I'm in lane, uh, just because I'm not actually thinking in that mentality right now. I get that. It's easy to get caught up, but you actually brought up a great point, which is kind of like the segue into the next subject. If you want to take that off there, Kate. Uh, so you're talking about that pinging. So the next thing that we were going to discuss with you was where to ward as an ADC and where to prioritize getting those things down safely. So just hitting it up to hitting it straight forward. Looking at that mini map that you see on the screen, where would you person where do you personally think is the best place for you as an adc to place a ward so i know the ideal spots are gonna be going into their red jungle on that mini map so at that intersection and then going into our blue at that intersection so you can cut through anyone going through the prime or the uh raptor pit you can see them anyone coming from their jungle or our jungle you can see them I know that's a little bit risky. I might not, as an ADC, go all the way into the jungle alone because they could collapse on me, and that's happened a lot, and I've learned that. Maybe just if I could get it to the edge of that like wall between Raptor and the lane, maybe that just a little, just quickly get to the uh, shadow wall and put it down. That might be the best spot. So I've, I've even put a ward deep in our own jungle. Like if they keep coming behind us, like in our blue okay. jungle. So I don't I don't disagree with what you're saying, but let's um let's let's break it down a little bit less macro and a little bit more micro. You have one ward for the next 120 seconds. Where are you putting it? One. That's uh, it. If I have one ward, I'm gonna put it one by one. their red jungle. By the red That's jungle. Right. Okay. Yeah. So here's the thing. Ultimately, as the dual lane, that is the best spot to put a ward. But then that's where that mindset is going to come down to the fact that you're like hey this is the best spot for the ward but is it your best positioning as an adc because how many times and you guys might be able to test this how many times have you gone to put a ward by the red jungle entrance and that duo follows you a lot that's what yeah that's exactly what i'm trying to say because <laughs> it's well, a dangerous <laughs> spot to put it and that's the thing because you're the you're the squishy you're the target but you're now overextended you're on their half of the map if that duo communicates attack right lane and that jungler happens to show up around those stairs around the corner you got the oh, duo not. and the jungler on you and what are you gonna do one twin blast dash or something all the way back to the tower no that's not gonna happen you're gonna get fucked up so ultimately yeah. use the the power of communication that we have just literally, it, even if it's just in the beginning of the match, send one message to your support if you're solo queuing and say, hey, I'm going to consistently ward the south side of the Raptors. Can you please just make sure the north side stays warded? Bet. And even then, your support at that point will be like, yo, this is an ADC that kind of knows what he's doing. He's going to make sure that there's always wards up because honestly, a lot of ADCs just don't use wards because they feel like they don't have to. And that's a very horrible mentality to have. But it's one of those things that even just conveying that message across, or if you're in voice comms with them, now for the rest of the game, you get to use your wards for benefit of the dual lane, and you're not exposing yourself. You follow? Yeah. And as simple oh, as even saying that to Solo in the beginning, or what were you going to say? 
I just had a follow-up question with that. I, I know yeah, some ADCs and junglers, they use rad poise instead of the standard shadow ward you get. Uh, is that something you would recommend from your experiences? Like, I should actually almost be more of a deep warder and my uh, support is always warding for us on that side? Or do you recommend keeping that shadow ward? Or does it just really depend on the situation at hand, I guess, To I mean, you, you just brought up a great question for both of us because I'm an ADC main and Kick is a jungle main. But, <laughs> I mean, honestly, here's the thing. And he's going to be able to elaborate, elaborate a little bit more on the jungle side to be exact but as as an adc i would say keep your stealth ward because the issue with the with the um the word that you're talking about what's it called again rad poise right rad poise yeah oh wait maybe i thought it was but that rad, pulse. Like more like the, rad pulse the rad pulse that's there like you go. rad poise is the, the universal like yeah so rad pulse the thing is on the pulse it's literally a short time frame and it's made to clear words as an adc i don't recommend that because if anything, if you're going to use a ward, it's better to use something that provides you vision for the entire duration. You follow? Like yeah. your, your job isn't to clear wards as an ADC. Now, per, I personally, I feel like that's not a bad idea for a jungler to grab the rad pulse and then just carry a sentry ward every once in a while just to help out. Now, how do you feel about that kick on the jungler side? So, the time that I use the D warder is whenever I'm in matches where the enemy team is warding so efficiently that I can't really successfully gank in a lane. Uh, okay. In which case I need to start D warding that way they don't have vision everywhere. Uh, otherwise, I like to, as the jungler, when I'm roaming around, putting those deep wards in to make everyone get the rotations of where their jungler is more frequently. Um, but if I'm in a situation where I can't find ganks because every time I step up near that raptor pit, I see everyone running straight back to their towers, then I know that I'm not ever going to get a kill if I don't deward something, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah. if I got a situation where these guys are playing forward and I can find my picks pretty easy as a jungler, I keep my wards and then I just look to deep ward to help everyone else see where the enemy jungler is as much as possible. Gotcha. And we'll talk about more of those things when we go into like the jungler video, right? But as far as the the pulse, as far as the warding, as an ADC, I would never worry about that. Let your support and your jungler handle situations like that, because they're probably the ones that are going to have the most free time to be able to go into that jungle and actually de ward. You feel me? So it's going to be one of those well, things your, that your support has scry stone too. So your support yep. has that second ward that they can rely on a little bit as well. Um, so they can have rad the, the pulse and a consistent ward both. And that comes down to like, in my opinion, for ADC and support lane for the duo lane, if you see them dewarding your wards frequently, so they have vision there and you don't, you might want to counter that by taking their wards down as well as a suggestion, because if they have vision there and you have no way of getting vision because they keep taking your wards down, then you're going to have to combat that. But if both of your teams safely have wards on your lane, I think that's okay for you because your goal as an ABC is to get your farm, have proper positioning and not die. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's the key, to be honest. That <laughs> last part of not dying, that's probably one of the hardest ones. What's um, what's the next subject on that? Because that, that's actually a perfect segue. Um, so we're running straight into when to back next and when we think it's an okay time to leave your lane to go get health, to buy an item, so on and so forth. So, Vol, let me, let me ask you this then. So as far as when to back, would you say that's a struggle? Um, not as much usually and it sounds very counterintuitive it's because i fail at the first part of my position that i usually die i usually die about the same time i get around 1100 so enough to get my hunt boost so it kind of works out it's kind of like <laughs> i happen to get die and go back and get the boots but uh, yeah unfortunately it's not ideal i'm dying but i would think you know, I want to stay in lane as long as possible, uh, and you know, maybe I could come back with even two items, and then I'm really that much ahead. You know, as long as I can stay alive but and still get last hits, it's not that big of a deal. But um, yet, usually, I would say I back at around 1100. Okay. If I, if I had to say. 
So that's about the time usually when wraps or wrap spawns, I believe, is when I get that. Okay. So let me see if if I can elaborate a little, a little bit more as to more of the why you should back and steer a little bit off of the when you should back. Because like this clip that we're looking of kick here is a perfect example. You see him backing at low health, his decker stays at low health. Right, he goes back, maybe finishes his items or gets a next step on his item, right? And then is going back to lane. Now, what you see here is the Decker is actually still in the lane at super low health and, yeah. and barely any mana. So let's be honest, if a fight breaks out right now, how useful is she? Um, almost none, like not gonna be able to be useful. Maybe at best, she's got one stun in her pocket. You feel me? But she's definitely going to be the first target. And here, Kick has to actually DM her in the chat and be like, Decker, please back. And then she finally backs. But when that happens, a team fight breaks out. Now they're in a team fight. And you see here, two junglers, a duo lane, and a carry. It's already a 3v2. Not in their favor. And the more of test to the win is because... It's not just about you having your life. It's not whether you can survive at that point or not. You always got to be in that mindset of, hey, if shit pops off, am I ready? And like, for example, you were saying, usually you end up backing because you die and then you buy your boots. So maybe that's something that you have to stop and not think to yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, let's, say, right. let's say you're a third HP, a third health, and the enemy ADC is at three quarters. Think to yourself at that moment, if shit pops off right now, am I winning this? If the answer is no, maybe you should back. Especially if, I, my personal suggestion is, if as an ADC, if you're below 40%, you should consider doing something to get your health up. Pop those health pots if you have to or something. Or if you're too low and there's a, and you can, you can visually see like, hey, you know what? Look, I got three people in front of me right now. Shit's about to go down. I don't see them backing. And then when I go back, look at that. There's a fourth one. There's literally people all over the lane. So at that point, Kick thought to himself, okay, you know what? I see what's about to go down. I see this shit that's popping off. I gotta go back and get ready for that fight. Because going back, and maybe I'm spending 12, 15 seconds backing and going back into the lane, but I'm going to spend a lot more time wasted by being dead for 30 seconds. You feel me? Yeah. Sometimes taking that hit and not like, you know, the being missing for a few seconds is more beneficial if shit pops off as opposed to you staying and then missing more of the match because of that death. Because having to die or not having to die more along the lines of dying just to buy your boots. Like, yeah, it's convenient. You're already there. You buy your boots, whatever. But the amount of minion last hits that you're missing, the amount of kill potential that you're missing when you're those 20, 30 seconds dead and then you still have to travel 15 seconds, you're setting yourself behind a whole minute, fam. Yeah. That and, shit and, adds honestly, up. Where I usually end up dying, uh, and it just happens to, <laughs> I just guess to be the teams I'm going against, uh, I usually die right before uh, rap spawns. I always get ganked by the jungler. And so it's not necessarily that my health is low. It's just that I, you know, I get hit by a really nice stun from the support and the jungler happens to be there. So I'm dead for rap spawn. Uh, and that's about when I have enough for boots and maybe the, for the start of whatever my next item is. Um, so, so I guess, I mean, maybe I just need it back sooner so I don't get caught out on that before rap spawn it. Yeah, there's like uh, there's like two or three times during the match that you need to be on high alert looking yep. for a jungler to gank. Right at the beginning of the match, it. whenever they still have red buff is a big one. And then the second one is whenever that raptor timer finishes and leading up to that. You know, yeah. so I'm saying like from the seven minute mark to the eight minute and thirty second mark, something is going to go down of some yep. sort. I see it's the way the game is right now. 
with the game right now, I mean, you're going to be expecting, if you don't see the off laner, the off laner might be there. The mid laner might be there. The They might all five be coming to your lane at that seven minute and 30 second mark. Yeah. That way they get the kill and they start the Raptor as soon as it spawns. So you got to be paying attention to that. And if you already know that's an issue of whenever you die, that's good. Because you just need to emphasize focusing on paying attention during that time. I mean, Absolutely. worst comes to worst, like this is something that I recommend some people sometimes. If remembering those timers sometimes is rough for you, yo, sticky notes work miracles, fam. You could legit just put a sticky note on the edge of your monitor that says two minutes, be careful. Seven minutes, be careful. Eight minutes, be careful. You get me? Just yeah. so you can have some sort of resemblance there, because he's not wrong. Like, you know how many times a jungler will come out for a level two gank just because they got that red buff? Oh, all the time. Fortunately, yeah, usually I have a, like, a, I have a ward down so I can avoid that one, but it's always the raptor gank that, uh, that gets me every time. Uh, so it might just at that point, I should back sooner, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. And then come back to the fight with, like, raptor fight with another item under my belt, too. It might actually give us yeah, the, the advantage in it. See, what me and Kick recommend for any player, specifically a beginner, is always as a carry back at seven minutes. Regardless where your farm is, regardless if you could have back 30 seconds later, we recommend back at seven minutes, mainly because it, it prepares you a little bit more. Like you said, you might come back with a little bit more of a damage spike. Worst comes to worst, you're just literally back and coming back with more health, full mana and ready for what's about to pop off because you know something will you know even if their solo laner doesn't rotate even if it's just a 4v4 something is going to happen and that's where mostly your warding is going to come into play and your positioning is going to come into play because when all that's going hectic especially being around that raptor pit you got to be mindful that you regardless of whatever the fuck is going down you will be the target as an ADC. You can literally be minding your business in the back line, shooting, everybody's focusing on your chimera that's in the front line. As soon as you step one foot too close, their entire team will forget about that fucking chimera and go right to you as an ADC. You can pretty much guarantee that that's exactly what's gonna happen. So that's why your positioning is key, that's why your warding is key because you don't wanna be in a position where their chimera literally just went around the raptor pit just to get to you and you had no idea because you guys didn't have wards. And that's why you always gotta be super hyper aware of the mini map, where you are, keep your max distance, apply consistent damage. And the key of the game is just stay alive and hold left click, quite frankly, as a carry. And then of course, aim and everything goes into that. Now, we, br we brought up an, a tiny little subject here that is actually a perfect segue into like the tiny little thing that we're going to talk about here because you mentioned backing, dying, and grabbing boots. Now, what's the next subject that we're going to talk about there, Kick? Uh, we are talking about where we're mentioning when it's okay mm -hmm. to grab the jungle camp um, in situations where that would be okay or when we should look to do that. Yeah, because no. here's the thing. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, I'm in the, I'm in the middle of a recording. Can you give me a minute? Estoy grabando. Por favor, dame tiempo. Bye. la puerta. Yo, my grandma legit just came in. She's like, hey, how come that grilled cheese isn't ate all the way? So adorable. But <laughs> I got but, um, my beef anyway. It worked out well. <laughs> lit recess. That was but no. Crop. <laughs> so basically, so what we're gonna be focusing on is mainly of when is it okay to talk to steal a jungle camp because it's something that can be done but it's not necessarily something that should be done right like in the example that we were talking about let's say you died and you got boots right yep. now a lot of carries stay because they just want that little bit of extra farm in their minds they're like hey maybe if i stay back here they won't jump on me and i'll still be able to get it like five more minion hits to complete an item but then by staying, you just got steel ulted and pushed out of that tower or something. You follow? Yeah. So it's so it's one of those things that periodically, 
if the situation is fit, if you are backing when low, because it's a smart thing to do, but you realize I'm 100 gold short, I'm 150 gold short. And if I come back with that next power spike, it's gonna be huge. Real shit, it's perfectly okay to go into the neighboring jungle, grab the closest jungle camp to assist you and then move forward. You don't want, typically as a carry, you don't wanna grab more than one jungle camp because at that point you're setting your jungler behind, right? So that's not yeah. something that you do always because any farm you steal from the jungle is a, is a slow progression. That's like your jungler coming out to your lane and taking five, three of your last hits. If, if your jungler that's comes out- That's something I do use my mini map. You were talking about that earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I just watch my jungler a lot. Uh, so I see, are they invading? Are they on their right side? Like on this case, are they in the red jungle? Because usually I prioritize then it's like, oh, I, you know, I have, they'll have a timer respawning. And by the time he's back, it should be back up for him anyway. Like okay. that's something I usually do. Okay. You know? so that's considered. I usually only take the, I usually only take the jungle camp. That's like right next to where kick is right now. That one, the closest one to the lane. Gotcha. I take one. If I'm on that side, that is. Yeah, and, and that's the one that you should take. But I, I would say caution, because not a lot of people realize that you leaving the lane, traveling to this jungle camp, and grabbing that camp, by the time you destroy it, hell, let's say you even have the, support, the help of your support, and they help you kill it faster. By the time you destroyed it, you probably just missed on like five or six last hits on minion okay. wave. So, so I actually don't do it that way, what you're saying. I actually don't. I usually okay. back, and it's on my way to the lane. I'll take it out. Gotcha. So I, I, I usually don't use it. I never did it the way you you suggested or you pointed yeah, out. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm a little bit short. I come back at it, the farm, and then go back to pick up my last item or whatever. I, I never actually thought of it that way. I mean, that's a pretty smart idea. I did it more so just to get some extra farm that I missed on my way to lane, so I don't lose too much time. So I'll actually caution the fact that you're arguably losing even more farm by doing that. Because if it's on your way back to the lane, not yeah. only did you not have that extra gold when you were in the shop where you needed it, because you probably won't be back to the shop for a few minutes. You feel me? Yeah. You're yeah. right now, by doing that, essentially in some way, shape or form, you're setting your jungler behind, you're grabbing his farm, and realistically, if you would have gone straight into the lane and gotten five last hits instead of sitting there clearing the jungle camp, you would have got more EXP, more gold, m maybe an opportunity for a kill. But for those 15 seconds, you were in the jungle while your support was defending by themselves. And now, you're, now your support might be low. Maybe your support's been getting poked the entire time. You feel me? Yeah. Are jungle caps, in terms of gold and experience, they're actually less than in lane minions? So, no, so the, they give 35 each, so 3 is, what, 70... It was 105? 105 yeah. for, uh, for an actual camp now. <clears throat> uh... The thing that you... The thing that I think is most important, whether we're talking about gold or not, is one thing, but... You're gonna be popping a health pot at least coming back to lane True. so you've already backed you're coming back you're already down one health pot early game which is detrimental got a support like you have been recently that's half of your heals right there because you have a decker support who doesn't have miracles because we're you know early in the game so you've that's got true. one health pot left before you have to back and go get more health yeah, that's a good point yeah so it, it it's one of those things that even if you it was worth the farm it's not your best situation, but quite frankly, a, as an ADC, like I, I, you can honestly get, especially the way that the game is right now, and that's why they're trying to adjust like jungle farm and stuff like that. You can get more potential of gold and farm in lane. The issue is in lane, you're in more danger. In the jungle, it's, it's usually a safer route to farm and you can consistently, here's the thing, in, in the jungle, there is no way you're missing a last hit. You feel me? And yeah, that's and yeah. that's the big trade off, because in the jungle, the jungler always gets the last hit because there's nothing, not, you know, there's no way he's missing it. Worst comes to worst, it goes back to full health. But in the lane, you can lose your last hit. And that's why those minions are worth more, because it actually takes art and skill to be able to get those last hits consistently. But if you're able to do so, you get the reward.